word. Welcome to the B-Side Word. Thank you. Everybody, back for another week. Hi, my fellow B-Side Worders. <laughs> Hang on, is that our audience? Got another, or lonely, our another lonely week we, in the B-Side Word studio. Three. Three hello. amigos. I'm Emma. Hello to person sat next to me. I am Devon. Hello, mm. person to the left of me. In the computer. I am Maxi. And he isn't in the computer. He's in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're looking through there. <laughs> I feel like Willy Wonka. <laughs> Person, what? person in the computer. <laughs> oh my gosh! And we are back for another week of interesting articles. Back, back, back. And to kick off back. this week, CJ, who's not here, actually submitted an article. We miss him. Come back, mate. This is some petty revenge. <laughs> I thought you were going to call him petty. Yep, continue. Petty revenge. You'll you'll, <laughs> you'll see why it's petty. This is such classic titling from myself. No. No, no. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. It's petty. Ready? <laughs> a woman. Where did that come from? Who was that? <laughs> that was Deb's little thing. No button. What even is it? It's a no oh. button. Oh, it's there you go. One. A woman who was forced to pay her cheating husband thousands of dollars in fees has had the ultimate petty revenge. So basically, her husband cheated. Yeah. She filed for divorce. Yeah. Courts ordered her to pay him a settlement of seven and a half what? US dollars, thousand US dollars. Oh, seven and a half. <laughs> Which is about just under 11 uh, Australian thousand. I'm not sure about UK or Euros. Um, but she wasn't happy with that, obviously. So what she decided to do was pay him. In dimes or 10 cent coins, the entire seven and a half thousand dollars. So she went to the bank, she explained her story and what she wanted to do, and they were like, Yes, hell yes. And she got 10 boxes and they filled it up with these coins <laughs> and it weighed 158 kilos. Oh, bloody hell. Bloody do you reckon she just dumped it at his doorstep? Uh, no, you can't live on the doorstep. Uh, and she'll have to pay again if it gets stolen. Um, this, this It's funny this article came up Why? because there was a bloke, uh, a cyclist in Adelaide yeah. and he got a fine for $60 or $70. Why? Because he did some, he, I don't know, he put the bike somewhere he, and he didn't agree with the fine. Exactly like this lady <laughs> went to the bank and asked for 5 and 10 cent coins for $60. What? Right? Yeah. So I can like, I can only imagine how many like. How many dimes this person got, right? Because the way that he um, tipped it onto the counter, it filled the whole counter. Oh, wait. Was there a video of him yeah. actually yeah. paying his fine? In the- yeah. And apparently it's illegal to pay your fines or people like a, a certain amount of money. Like you can't pay in five and ten cent coins to pay a fine. They won't accept it. What? Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. This brings me to your sister. Who I, it wasn't a fine, but she went to pay for something in coins, and they told her, "Sorry, you can't accept that." And she's like, uh, "Yes, you can. It's legal tender. Like, <laughs> what is it if it's not money?" And they're like, "No, we can't." And they, they, she was like, "Yes, you can, and you will basically." And they had, they did. But how, how can you say you they can't did? pay I, I in coins? You can't pay in coins apparently. I was just curious. Like, what was the? Was it a dime? There was something which was the material it was made of was worth more oh. than its monetary value. Yeah. So I was really curious. If imagine if she went through all that effort and oh. then he just chucks it in the scrap and gets even more money. From it. Oh no way! <laughs> oh, this, is, this is ten thousand dollars worth of uh, mercury oh, in these thank coins. God. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> that is. Oh, she would be fuming. Fuming. <laughs> That'd be a great. Not that I'm back in the cheating husband. Yeah. But if he did do that, I'd have a level, a guilty level of respect for him. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like. You know, you're a, you're a shitty guy, but that was a good move. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, petty, petty, petty revenges. Uh, when did you guys grow out of that? I've never. I it was never in it. <laughs> I've never grown out of. I've never no, grown. I was never in it. <laughs> You've never been in a petty. I've never done any petty revenge. Huh? How about you, Maxi? I can't think of any examples, good examples of me. I might be boring. Have you got some, Dev? I, you sound like 
like you have some. I, I've done. I've man. I'm very like spiteful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, like, and it's like, it's taken me a long time to get rid of that trainer. Like if someone does something to me, it's like really personal, you know? Yeah. So, um, and it's, and it's sneaky stuff. It's really okay. sneaky stuff. Oh so if someone God, like what? So the person doesn't know. So my, my thing is if someone does something to me and they think it's funny and they make everyone laugh at me, I go, okay. Okay. So stuff's <laughs> going to happen to this guy and he doesn't know why it's happening to him. I so like, just, okay, can I just halt you in and stop you in tracks? I like that it's a guy and not an ex because now I don't need to fear. The oh, no, 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 no. Like, uh, if I. You're talking about a guy at your work. <laughs> if it was something to do with a girl, it's probably my fault and I probably deserved it. So uh, I'm like, okay, whatever. Oh. But if it's something I don't deserve, then like, it's like, like putting sunscreen, right? Underneath a, a door handles, God. right? What? Door handles in the, on a car, right? Why? And, yeah, right. Because it's annoying. You put your ha- hand Cause underneath it slips. The, No, because you put your hand underneath your door handle of a car and then you look and you go, there's sunscreen, right? How many times have you got something to wipe that sunscreen off <laughs> your hand? It's like really, really st- stuff that really yeah. will annoy you. <laughs> but not so really. So do you do these things not as pranks but as revenge? <laughs> it's petty. It's petty <laughs> revenge. And then you see the guy and he's got this sunscreen in his hands and he's like, uh... <laughs> Put it on your face. What are you gonna do? Oh my god! And that, Ew, I would not put. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's door handle that. sunscreen on my you tell face. Him, so you don't have that. You don't have a bone like <laughs> door that. Door handle sunscreen. You don't have a bone like that. No. I've never I don't know. That. I feel like it must be triggered. But I just can't think of examples. Oh, because like you got three brothers. You got two well, brothers. So I thought it'd be in like this game that I you guys would have played. I can't even do April Fool's Day ones. I feel too guilty. I mean, we did do stuff, but. I've put you on the spot. I'm really struggling. Like, there must and by be the stories. Way, there, there'll be stories come flooding back after after we finish the podcast. I can imagine Max. I'll be in the WhatsApp group yeah, like, guys, this is a great story. Add this, add this I'll on. Just record it and you can pop it back in. Oh my goodness. It was called Petty what Revenge because Petty Cash. Guys. No, I get what the play is. Oh, oh, you get it? You get no, it? That was the joke. That, that was nice the one. joke. Nice yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Why is your thinking? Of- I got some stories here though okay. on BuzzFeed where they talk about um, people that share their petty revenge stories. All right, read us some. Um, here's one. So this woman had a boss who she couldn't stand, and one day she banned microwave popcorn in the office because the boss hated the smell. She's like, I don't like the smell of microwave popcorn. It's banned. Oh. So about a month later, this woman who hated her boss. <laughs> Bought a scented candle which smelled oh, like no. <laughs> nice. and left it by her desk, nice. and it took the boss six months <gasps> to figure out <laughs> why the smell was coming from. She it. probably kept coming out like whenever she'd smell it, and like walk straight over to the microwave and try and suss out like. Oh, that that, so who did it this time? Yeah. <laughs> that actually triggered another like another story, right? Oh. And this is not me. Okay. This is not personally me, but there was this guy. There was annoying another, let's say, A friend and B friend, right? Oh, okay. So B friend was annoying A friend and A friend had enough. Okay. So he had prawns on the weekend, right? Okay. And he took who? all... Who had prawns? A friend. Okay. A friend A had prawns yeah. and he saved all the shells and the heads, right? No. And yeah. then he put those into a bottle and he filled it up with water, left yeah. it out in the sun and let it ferment okay. over the weekend. He then, you know those bottles with the spray? Yeah. So he, he he got the bottle and he started to spray the inside of the car of friend B. Oh. Right? What? <laughs> right? And and he did it on the interior side and at the air conditioning. Oh. It took him forever to get the smell out of the car. Oh my right? and you, and god. And he was looking you're looking for it. You're looking for that prawn. He's like, oh, I've left something in the car. I, I don't know what it is, right? Oh. And you will never ever find what it is because it's embedded in the material. No. It is unreal. That's the... Is that still classed as petty? Like, I feel like there's a limit. <laughs> it was like a petty action, but the consequences were beyond. Awful. I mean, he petty. wouldn't be able to go on Tinder dates. <laughs> he wouldn't be able to like. <laughs> I like how you, you know those parallel thoughts that Tinder me and days. Maxie were talking about? But yeah, he, no one <laughs> could go in his car. They'd be like, can I have a ride home from soccer? And he's like, no. <laughs> You can, but you have to put it. People say that if if you if your kids ever been sick in the car, yes, 
I've heard of people sell in their car because they said they just couldn't get the smell of oh sick. Oh my god, I, oh. our little one. I've met, we've managed to get it out, but on a hot day, I actually noticed it yesterday on a hot day, it actually comes through a bit. The, the s- Yeah, the vomit. Don't smell. let people know. <laughs> We're going to sell the car. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to sell it's it during winter. It's the most winter. infuriating thing, by the way, because it goes all on the seat belts was... and all into the buckles, like into the metal bits where the seat... oh, oh, trying to get it out is a nightmare. Emma, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough of this. <laughs> but, uh, oh. If you're gonna sell the car, as long as you're not selling it in Norway, where we have the most listeners this week. Oh, <laughs> he's just plugged Boy, Norway. Oh. Come no, on, Australia. Thank you, Norway. <laughs> Thank you, Norway. We love you. <laughs> Um, Wait, so go back to this petty. Yeah. Go back to the petty. Aww. So you're saying, I want to. I just want to find out. So the person, um, so friend A, you think went oh, beyond petty? Wait, prawn with guy? The, with the prawn guy. <laughs> prawn guy. I'm just trying to figure. Is that too far? I think. Was that too far? I think it's I think too that's beyond far. Petty. Because that would literally Here's a good ruin. example of petty, right? Yeah. This is what he should have done. <laughs> he should have took his friends. A should have took friends B number. Yeah. He should have went on Craigslist and then set him an advert. And say I'm selling two goats. <laughs> what? <laughs> Call me <laughs> on this number, and then friend B Keep would have constantly got phone calls throughout the goats. days and weeks of people asking him, "Hey, can I buy goats of you?" Oh <laughs> my like, god! I don't own goats. How big are your <laughs> That's goats? That's petty. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yes, the anonymous. I'm looking for a. <laughs> I'm looking for a for a, a friendly companion. Yeah. Goat. This week for another Max Fact. Max Fact. Max Fact. Max Fact. (laughs) Got very Broadway there at the end. (laughs) It was. Broadway. Alex said you could sing. (laughs) (laughs) That was. So not singing. <laughs> okay. I'm so much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my fact for this week is if this is more of a theoretical fact, okay? So if you could have a massive piece of paper which is normal thickness, which is very long, mm. how many times would you have to fold it in half before its thickness? So every time you fo- you fold it in half, it becomes twice as thick, right? You fold it in half again, yeah. it becomes four times as thick because it's twice and twice. How many right. times would you have to fold it before it is thick enough to reach the moon? What? Oh, man. Oh, these math questions, honestly. <laughs> math questions from the mathematician. That's Alex, the mathematician. How, how far are we from the moon? We are oh, about... Don't tell me you're going to actually try and work it out mathematically. 384 thousand kilometers from the moon a piece of paper is about 0.1 millimeters thick i'm gonna say 89,000 times what what are you talking about folding (laughs) but he asked for the length of the paper didn't you no that's what i'm asking a 0.1 millimeter thick how many times you would fold it paper how many times do you have to fold it in half so that its thickness would then reach the moon i'm gonna say sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. okay dev um let's go three hundred thousand uh to let's say if you fold it ten <laughs> i'll say I'll say 500. The answer is 42. Oh. What? The answer is 42 what do you mean? times. So, 40 Wait. so if you uh, if you do 380,000 like and you 42 square root it by 42, it should equal the answer. Is that what you Wait, saying? but how long is this piece of paper? 42 because you the length is the relative like this this why it's theoretical what we're saying if you took 0.1 millimeters and you doubled it and then doubled it again and then doubled it again then it would come to be oh 384,000 in 42 I don't believe it I think we're gonna have to test this theory so if you find that it's 42 the square root the square root of 380 42 ah how do you do this 42 that special that special symbol 
square and three hundred eighty. It'll equal, it'll be equal no, point uh, point. No, it doesn't. What I did, it works by, doesn't it? To the power of two, four. I don't get it. It'll be to the power of something, right? Yeah, but oh man, I forgot how to do it. Two one point. So if I had a long piece of paper and I just went fold, yeah, fold, fold forty two times, I'd be to the moon. Yeah. How tall are we all? Dev? 5'7". Five, or 5'8". Five, <laughs> I'm not 5'8". I don't know. You just make up 5'8". I keep telling you I'm 5'7". Okay. I'm 5'7 then. Yep. Maxi? You're the same height? He's like literally a few centimetres taller. I'm not. I don't know. I don't know where she... I don't know if she's... Anyway. Anyways, Maxi, how tall are you? I am 6'2". That is pretty tall. <laughs> That's pretty tall. Um... Well, I'm 168 centimetres. And I'm 170. Yeah, so you are taller. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But not if I'm wearing heels. <laughs> no. Anyway. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this article basically says, get this, guys. All right. Hit me. Every inch above five foot seven places greater strain on the heart. That's why my heart's pumping so well. <laughs> That's why I'm perfect. Every inch above... So you're suggesting like if five foot seven is at my lips, yep. my head <laughs> is... My, yep. my head is the bit that's above five foot seven and that's the thing that's placing greater strain yes. on my heart. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, or, so what if i lean no, over? Wait, what if i lean wait, my head down there's a good question and I get here. underneath the five foot seven limit it depends where you grow from do you it, do you grow up or do you grow down what do you grow you're suggesting that your head that you grow from your feet to the tip to the top of your head <sighs> that's a proper philosophical, right? <laughs> philosophical right. question i don't think it's just one direction i think it's uh there Every direction. I think so it, I basically think it the outer edges of your entire I, body. No, I think it depends. <laughs> the outer edges of my entire body. <laughs> I think body. it depends how, if you've got a bigger torso or <laughs> longer legs. <laughs> you know what I mean? It yeah. depends. But no, my, my point was, <laughs> what I was trying to say, my point was, is it the things that are only... <laughs> Above five at seven. If I squat, am I under? Oh. Am I now under five at seven? Oh. And now there's not a strain on my heart. Oh, that was a question I was trying to say. <laughs> if you stand on a stool, are you going to have the same problem? <laughs> I see. I see, oh, where, yeah. I see where you're going. I don't know now. where. I, I, I don't going. know why I went to. Yeah, the outer edges. Anyway, so a new study suggests that this this is happening, right? So, <laughs> the, so scientists in the US found. Height is linked to an increased chance of developing atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular and often rapid heartbeat, um, leads to stroke, leads to heart failure. Um, they did a study on more than 600,000 people um, involved in the Penn Medicine oh. Biobank, of whom 65,446, which is 12.5%, um, had atrial fibrillation. And of those, they found that... Um, those that are higher than five foot seven, taller than five foot seven, were had the increased risk. So it said it said from five foot seven yeah. onwards, every inch after that increases by about three percent chance of having a heart. Wow. Uh, yes. Issue. Wow. So what about Taco Fall, that seven foot five basketball Celtics player? <sighs> what about him? He's gonna have big. However many more three percents. <laughs> That's a lot of three percents, man. A lot. He's gonna have a lot of three percenters. <laughs> I don't know. I just I've not heard of this before. I've I never guess heard it's of it. from this new study. So pretty interesting. No, have I. Pretty much. And pretty much. Also, oh, yeah. this could be a public health announcement. PSA. If you if you know you're over five seven, keep an eye out on your heart. And just stay just, low. Uh, stay low, guys. Make sure you carry a defib <laughs> around with you. Just, just, just carry a defib around. I wonder if you can actually buy personal defibs. Yeah. How much are they? Um, I think they're twelve hundred in Australia. But they're massive, right? You can't just carry it around. How do you know this? We though? we had to <laughs> we had to purchase purchase them for the trucks. 
What, every truck has one? You can one? buy a defibrillator, I think it's a personal one, for a thousand pounds. Oh, there we go. You go. I think we must have got a bulk, bulk I discount. Went, where was I the other day? <laughs> bulk discount. I went to somewhere. You're all shorty, so they're like, no, it doesn't matter. They didn't even... And it said defibrillator We're getting the here. fake ones and charge them less. And the box was empty. What, what, what? I went somewhere probably in the, within the last week and it said, you know, the sign for that's where the defibrillator was and that was the box that it's usually in. And it was empty. Yeah, they're probably using it. I was like, uh, where is it? <laughs> they're probably using it at the time. Like at that very time that I was going past, there was no ambulance. There was no commotion. You don't commotion. need an ambulance. You don't need an there ambulance. There's no commotion. <laughs> where you were, the commotion wouldn't be where the no DPB is. The It'd be where the person is. The guy waits to find the thing and then. <laughs> well, I'm... He's like, where's the defib machine? All right, now. <laughs> but wait, wait, where was this, Emma, that, you, that it was empty? Oh, I can't remember. I know it was in the last week. It'd like, probably oh. be in the shopping center. It's probably worth raising. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take Deb's approach and just assume it's being used. <laughs> Ah, uh, no problem. <laughs> it was either the swimming pool or the shopping center. I can't remember. Okay. Do you know uh, you can get automatic defibrillators yes. that people yes. use? What do you like? So you can just have it on. It's like attached. You, when people have a really serious yeah. heart issue, they can just have it attached to them all the time. And then when they have, I don't know if you need reg something registering their pulse, and when it gets abnormal or stops, then... They just get that's shot. Not, that, that's not um, attached to the pacemaker, is it? Wait. Maybe. Didn't we discuss this recently know. and someone got shocked when they weren't actually having a heart issue? I'm not sure. I couldn't... Yes, we did. Someone who had remember. a pacemaker or something, <laughs> it gave him a shock. I reckon it was like... <laughs> yeah. It was a woman and she was pregnant... And because being pregnant increases the risk of, increases, like, I don't know, it's something to do with her heart. And the machine misread what was happening and shocked her. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty, that's not no. good. I thought you were going to tell a story of some short guy who sees a very <laughs> tall person and just assumes he has a heart issue. <laughs> so just <laughs> automatically applies a defib. Well, <laughs> with doctors to his knees. Like I guess if you're a doctor now and a tall guy comes in, you know, it's on your, it's got to be on your mind now. <laughs> I don't foot, know. I don't know. Five about foot knees. seven. I don't know. How many knees. inches above? But um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that would have been interesting to get it from Alexander's. I know. That's why he should have been here for this article because he's what six foot. Five? I don't know about this as well. Cause six, 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 so five, five seven, five. right? If you're five seven but really fat, I don't think that um that applies to you this defib this this heart problem. It will so you like, have increased risk of heart think, problems from the rubber tire for sure. Huh? I think the idea is that <laughs> <laughs> rubber tire. That's I think she's talking about the belly. The middle. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think it's that because they had so many people in this study. The idea is all things being, all equal, things being equal, height yeah. is uh, just the factor. But obviously, there's lots more like your yeah. diet changes it, your yeah. weight. Right. Okay. So all things being equal, genetics. Mm. So all things being equal, then height is a contributing factor to heart. I don't know. I don't know. What's it called? Heart. I don't know if that's right though, because they did study six hundred thousand people. They wouldn't have all been at the same starting. Um, Thingy. Yeah, but I think you want like six hundred thousand is enough to even it out. To they all average out, yeah. Like it would be very, very shocking if, on average, the people less than five foot seven were significantly fatter than the people above. <laughs> yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah. Like just as an average, yes. The, you know, when you have three hundred thousand different types of people, it'd be very, very like tiny chance that that's yeah. the case. Yes. <laughs> True. That's a good number. Six and half a million. I have people. a question. When you're with my brother, Alexander, uh, yes. does he seem tall to you or no? Because you're at yes. six foot two. Does he really seem that tall to you or not so much? It's all relative, of course, but like I'm used to, remember, I'm used to looking at people at a certain height, like the, the average height of a person. So when I look at him, I notice I have to change <laughs> how I look. At Wait, him. what's the average height? 5'10. You know? uh, I think it's 5'10. Depends where you go. Oh. 
So do you feel tall? Because to um, me, six foot two isn't really that tall. Like it's, it's pretty kind of... tall. Six two is pretty tall. All right. No, no, no. <laughs> but to me, I would say a man is five foot nine worldwide. Uh... Six foot two is pretty tall. I feel like to me, because I was surrounded by tall people, it's just normal. Like, I think that's yeah. true yeah. as well. Like, I, I when my friends I grew up with happened to be small for some reason. I chose small <laughs> friends. Maybe I felt good about myself. <laughs> and and to the point where Melody, like, I introduced her to my friends. She was like, "All your friends are small." Wait, I'm how like, tall oh, is yeah. Melody? She's five. Seven, oh, same height. Oh, I think. okay. Yeah, see, I told you Four, I'm not five, tall. Six. I hate being called tall. Like, it's one of my little things. Five, seven? She's tall in our, in my family. I oh, know, she's five, six, I think. Five, six. Emma's tall in my family. Yeah. So okay. when we go to uh, family events, Emma's, you'll notice Emma. Heads and shoulder. <laughs> because, of no, because of her height? Or because... Uh... Head and shoulders. Head and shoulders. <laughs> Heads and shoulders. No. no, literally, actually. No, seriously. Head and shoulders. Head and shoulders. Like I, when I notice I'm tall, mostly is when I stand in public areas and I can see like <laughs> a sea of heads. I can see, <laughs> like I can see over most people's heads, you know. So I can see yeah. like if I want to be like, where are we going? And I can see, and then I'm with Melody or whoever else who's a smaller size human, <laughs> and they will be like, they can't see. Smaller sized human. <laughs> <laughs> Smaller size species. So that's when I notice it the most. But otherwise, like, unless they're very small or very tall, like, I don't, I'm not very really conscious of my height. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not tall enough where I bump my head into things oh. very often. See, what my you trick I mean? is, if someone's really tall, I stand back. <laughs> so I don't have to angle up. <laughs> it's all perspective. <laughs> you stand closer to the camera, right? Oh my God. I stand further away. And I'm like, now we're going to talk eye to eye. You don't need to come any closer. <laughs> eye to eye. Let's talk eye to eye. How far back are you, 100 meters? Well, when they're really tall, you've got like a 10 yeah. meter like, distance. Oh, if I'm talking gosh. to Alexander, I'll bring my binoculars. I'm like, all right, Alexander. Or just carry a seat around with you. <laughs> carry, <laughs> carry a seat? So a stick? Can sit carry down. a step ladder. Seat. Oh, for so them. They oh, so they can sit down. So they can sit down. Or your own right. personalized stool. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah. So you carry. So you're gonna carry a stick around for a other stick? people as well. Why That's are you cool. carrying a stick? Can you just sit on this, please. <laughs> a stool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Emma, it's your joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, would you saw your legs to try and make them longer? Did you say saw? <laughs> or. St- what what did I did? Like, is there a surgery to make yourself grow bigger? Like saw yeah. your legs. We spoke yeah, about we this, did. didn't we? What? You can add to shin bone. You break your leg, right? You break it in half, and then you leave like a centimeter or two centimeter gap, and then you just put rods in there to support it, and then your body, the bone will sort of merge across that gap and then form a longer bone. What about the skin? The skin's Easy grows back. What about the... In fact, you could probably just stretch the skin to start with, then it would just form more cells. What about the nerves and stuff like that? That They just stretch as well. The, uh, sorry, the... You create new nerves as you grow new bone. Stuff. Hmm. Those ones, I guess, have to stretch as well. But again, like, your body grows all the so time, right? So would you right? do well, that? Not all the time. Would you go through that? <laughs> no. To, to get taller? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm happy with my height. Can you think of, uh, like, if you... What's the biggest pro? Like, if you could be... If you were lucky enough to be my height, yeah. Dev, <laughs> what would be <laughs> what would be like the biggest positive about it that maybe I take for granted? Um, being that height, um, do you say that high? That height. Height. <laughs> height. That height. Okay. Actually, wow, imagine being up there. Because <laughs> I don't see my height as a disadvantage. That's the thing. So. I'd be happy at six two okay. or five seven. Like to me, it makes it makes no. Okay, good answer. That's enough. Um, but do you ever struggle picking things out the top shelves in oh, your he kitchen? Does. Do I? Yeah. What? So you <laughs> see me? Wait, wait, wait. So I'm in the kitchen, <laughs> right? And you see me struggling to get something. You're like, "Yep, he's struggling again." And you got the video on me. Most people like. Hang on a second. Answer my question. No video, but yesterday you were struggling with the trophies. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, and hey, you know what? The funny thing is, I go, M, M, how did you get it up there? 
And because M's has got extra long arms. Everyone always asks me okay. to reach for everything. Because M's is, but like Emma, uh, uh, we're on the couch, right? And they're not extra long arms. The, the extra long arms. <laughs> anyway, Emma goes, I go to Emma, can you get that, um, can you get the remote? And Emma just goes, reaches. And she, <laughs> she reaches, gets it, right? Because I'm like, man, you, you reached. Like I went and tried to get the remote. I couldn't have reached. I was asking you because you were closer. Emma didn't get up. She just reached out with her arms and got it. I went, that's very long arms. <laughs> Wait, was this remote in between you no, both? No, so it was on Emma's side. No, no. So it was in between us. Oh, it's like an angle a bit. But it's just Emma didn't... Like in front of you, but in between. Yeah. And Emma, like normal okay. people, no, no, <laughs> would have to get up off the table. Oh, in the car, it's like, I'll have to reach for it because I can reach it. Or like just everyone around me, doesn't matter where I am. Even at the shop sometimes, like they're like, Oh, can you get that for me? <laughs> it's like because okay. they're slim. They're very slim and agile. <laughs> oh, well, that's a yeah. compliment. Uh, Loving that. Yeah, okay, go, go, go back. <laughs> high five. High five. High five. <laughs> not that high, not that high. <laughs> mid mid five. <laughs> <laughs> mid, mid Emma just five. got it. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> okay, guys. This Adelaide guy, which is a man that lives in Adelaide, Australia, <laughs> uh, goes yep. by the name Branco Soda. Great name. Um, he went on holiday, came back from his holiday, yeah, and found... What did he a find? gigantic yeah. water tank. Uh-huh. This doesn't even do it justice. Right next to his house, 200 millimeters from his porch, as in he can reach out, touch this water tank. Yeah, 200 this millimeters. This water tank yeah. is 15.2 square meters. It's four meters tall. Yeah. 50,000 liter tank. It's, it's huge. You have to it's actually huge. see the it's got a ladder to understand. It's got a ladder so you can get to the top. Oh, it has a ladder. It looks like it weighs more than the house. It looks like it's taller <laughs> almost. I mean, this is just... Oh no, it's not taller. But it is big. And this guy has been trying to fight it ever since. So he's got quite a big... I think he's on acreage, about 13,000. Mm-hmm. And the neighbor also has quite a lot of land too. And the neighbor has three other water tanks, I think, and had requested to put a new one, was approved through council. And this this guy here that's complaining knew that he was that his neighbor was going to get a new water tank, had no idea it was going to be on his doorstep, quite literally on his doorstep. He's lost $20,000 off his house. No. What? Because of this monstrosity i don't get it so is it is it on the neighbor's land yep How so he went neighbors... to council and said i want this removed and they said sorry it's on the it's on their it's on their property so he's in he's <coughs> infringed on the um like i don't know the, the property... neighbor who's put this up it's on there it's it's not on this guy's land it's on his neighbor's land but the, what i'm saying is like you are you saying that the the like usually there's like um a meter between. I know. That's what I was thinking. The houses, the border, they must have just got a map of the, literally a map of their border lines and gone, oh yeah, it's on their border. Not knowing where the other guy's house was. That's interesting. Oh, it's so bad, hey. But I guess, I guess if it's your land. No, there's got to be some like. I know. Sort of some laws about like eyesores and having it imposed on other people's views and stuff. Like in, I think there is when you're building a new home, but maybe because it's just it was just a water tank, they were like, okay. And I don't reckon they knew where this guy's home was. But what I don't because they what, declined what his neighbor does this. Yeah, what neighbor? So does he it? he was really close friend with his former neighbors, but then this is a new neighbor um, that's come in and done this, and the new neighbor can't even look him in the eyes anymore. Um, <laughs> But it's they, because of the big water tank in the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally can't look him like, in the eye. He, this guy says he used to host like some weddings and funerals and stuff on his property, which he can't, he doesn't really want to do anymore because it's just, a, and he can't sit out on his porch because he's just looking at this like gigantic water tank. Hang on a sec. Unreal. Hang on a sec. The, he can look straight. He doesn't have to look at that. You, he said he can see this from when he's out the back still. It's that big. Yeah. And 
It's not but the Great Wall of China. There is though. good news for this guy. <laughs> okay. Because council is now reportedly assessing the a planning application for the tank because it might be non compliant by 0.2 of a square meter. <laughs> so oh. I reckon what's happened, council have gone, oh crap, we allowed this to go like literally right next door to this man's home. Yeah. Uh, we'll try and find any way to get out of it. And they've gone, oh, 0.2. That's, I reckon the bag that of money. Might be our out. Or the bag of money. There bag you go. Money. Yep, that's it. Holiday jewels. Holiday jewels. <laughs> Yachts. It's all there. I don't know if you guys know. Actually, this is pretty cool. Qantas, which is an airline in Australia. Yep are undergoing Project Sunrise. Are they okay. allowed to use that word? Why? Because isn't that copyright with the Sunrise like Project TV show? Sun- Project Sunrise. Oh, okay. By the way, that name has a backstory. I'll, I'll fill you in on that as well. Okay. Anyway, so Project Sunrise is a three-part project, I believe, and it's the world's longest flights. This is a project run by scientists and they have just completed their second phase. Now, phase one, they went from New York to Sydney. (coughs) Phase two, in one flight. Mm -hmm. Phase two, they've just, I think they just got back yesterday or the day before. Yeah. Um, 20 hours in the air, uh, London to Sydney. They made it? That's a long time. Direct flight, London to Sydney. That's a long time. So 17,800 kilometre journey. Uh, they just well, they were just scientists on board. Um, and what they're trying to find out is how to combat um, jet lag in the air. So jet lag kicks in, I think, once you cross three time zones. Yeah. Um, <coughs> In a certain period. Yeah. The exact period. Um, So anyway, they've just successfully landed the second ultra long haul. Um, 19 and a half hour flight, sorry. Jet lag's a big thing. 52 Mm -hmm. passengers. Now, and also, did you know, so the first one I said was New York to Sydney. Yeah. That's actually, the London to Sydney is 1,500 kilometers further, but it takes, but it's shorter because of the prevailing tailwinds. There you go. Fun fact. Um, but what they're trying to figure out is how can they make make the cabins more comfortable for long haul flights? Well, these extra ultra long haul flights. Mm. So they're sort of had all these exercises that we're testing out and they're thinking of ways to change the cabin, like maybe having a stretching zone or overhead um, handles where you can hold on to and do <laughs> low, low impact stretches whilst in the air. I swear. Wait, wait. I swear they have just watched Soul Plane. What's and that? It's got Kevin Hart. Oh, yeah. Snoop Dogg. Do you remember that movie? No. Did they have stretching zones in there? They had a <laughs> nightclub in there. What? They had a nightclub in there. They had, um, a, they had first class, normal class, and like budget class. And the yeah. budget class had like, it was pretty much people hanging on like they were on the train, on the bus. All standing I'm up. I'm pretty sure this... For the whole All flight. standing up for the whole flight, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen no. this. Yeah. I Soul, haven't seen that. Soul Pl- I think it was one of Kevin Hart's first thing. But anyways, you're describing Soul Plane to me at the moment. That's probably where they got the inspiration from. <laughs> the scientists. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> the pilots were wearing an EEG. Um, to oh, track their brainwave patterns. Oh, okay. It's an electroencephalogram. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tracks their brainwave <laughs> patterns. They're wearing three, three GoPro. GoPro cameras yeah. to monitor their alertness as well. Yeah. Um, and basically, from all of this, they're going to try and make the final decision on whether these ultra long haul flights will become commercial but let's not forget last year they have already started one which was perth to london london to perth that, um, that's, and that that's, has become their that's four hours shorter already though already it's only four hours though what? and already two hundred fifty thousand people have done that and that particular route has their highest approval ratings mm. Mm. yeah um because you said um the scientists are on there to combat um jet lag 
Mm. Have they come up with or is the exercise that's, that they're currently underway? So this is phase two. Okay. What was phase one? Oh. That that was the New York to oh, okay. Sydney. Sydney. New York to Sydney. Okay. Did, oh yeah, I see on the map now. So you say New York to Sydney yeah. is shorter, shorter distance, but, but takes a long a longer time. What yeah. if they fly the other direction? I don't know. I think you're going into no zone, no fly zones, aren't you? If you go the other way. I don't know. Same zone, it's just different. The current's against you, right? Yeah, I don't know. Are you saying like over certain countries? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. But would you get on a 20-hour no. flight? No, no. Like, nope. I feel like it would be kind of cool. I, I think it's too long. Because hours you can for me. Not. Yeah. Would you rather me. two 10-hour ones? or to, uh, I'd rather the, the flight that they've got now, like 8 and 12. And I'll, I'll stay in Singapore. I'll stay in Singapore. Break yeah, up the flight. Yeah, I like the. I like the Singapore. Over. How long does it take to get from Singapore? Eight hours. Yeah, the Singapore. The, yeah, there's so many different routes you can Singapore go. to Sydney is yeah. eight hours. Yeah. And then Singapore to the UK is like 11, 12 hours. 12. 12 hours. 12 hours. Hmm. 12 hours. 20 hours is a long time. It's a long time. It's a day, almost. Yeah. And plus oh the stopover. God. Takes you, you get it takes more than twenty four hours, doesn't it? Door like door to door, it takes yep. like closer to twenty eight and a half. Like that. It was it was thirty hours. It was it was thirty hours oh, when I 30, when yeah. I went to Emma with when I went to see Emma. It was eight hours to Singapore, six hours stopover, and then twelve hours to from so Singapore. So six hours stopover is quite long. If you, you did all of that for Emma, that's all right. Yeah. Oh, special. 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 Um. Now, the reason they've called it Project Sunrise, yes. here we go. Ooh, All right. Let me... bit, it's after the Qantas double sunrise endurance flight during World War II, which saw two sunrises whilst in the air. Oh. There you go. That's interesting. There you go. There you go. I feel, like, it, I feel like actually a lot of people will take this up because a lot of people don't want to have to do the stopover and wait in an airport for hours on end without... Like just literally twenty with hours. Their, like with if it's their... a cool, like if it's a good air airplane with stuff to do, then okay, cool. I think that's what they have to do. They have to rejig the airplane cabins for sure. Apparently, but they there's just want a, their money. there's looking at the regulations and they're, they're suggesting that they might not need to have at the moment all airplanes look the same inside, right? All the seats face in yeah. the same direction. But they're suggesting now that that like the safety, the how extra. How much extra safety you get from that isn't worth it. So they they might have to they might be able to have like table seating. You know when seats face each other. Oh wow! Uh, they can not they don't have to face forward or back because they can face any direction. So then you get a bit more creative with how they look. Um, they, oh, so on takeoff oh, though, on takeoff so they'd good. have to face upwards, right? Because I don't I couldn't imagine facing backwards and oh, and when you're taking off, off and taking like off. looking down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, I hope this holds. I hope this. Oh no, because it's not even there. It's around your waist. Are you, Maxi? You know, on trains, are you are you okay um, for the trains to go? Are you facing backwards? Are you all right yeah. traveling? Yeah, Would I'm you? A, I'm okay. Be all, with that. Uh, are you? Yeah. I'm horrible. Oh really? I'm horrible with that. I, I have to face forward. And people get the like it because like, I don't know if you've got this on the on the trains, but when we had when I used to catch a train. You could flip it forward yeah, or back. Yeah, yeah, the seats. The seats? What? Could you, can you change the direction of the seats? Yeah, can you change the direction of your seats? No. So, so we can change the direction of the seats here, right? And I always have to face forward, but sometimes the people are facing backwards on when I change it forward. So <laughs> I'll be sitting and looking at the person looking at me the yeah, whole. Yeah, <laughs> and they're like, "Why the hell did Why you did change you do that?" that? <laughs> and our knees are touching, and it's I go I <laughs> I will get sick <laughs> if I face the other way. <laughs> Do you say that? Oh, sorry, I've got to face forward. No, in my head I'm saying it. I'm not saying. <laughs> I'd say it to him, but like oh, oh. travel sickness. Yeah. Travel sickness. <laughs> and then roll your eyes. Well, that's interesting. So twenty hours. Yeah. I think it's too long for me. Pretty long. Pretty long. If it's there was stuff long. to do with kids, that's pretty long. That is horribly, especially like, if it saves me two hundred pounds or something, two hundred dollars. I'd be like, okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Oh. I think like when I think when Actually, nearly yeah, all the time when I plan on journeys, it's nearly always cost, which is a fact, and nothing else. Uh, yeah. I'm the same. Cost, and now hmm. when I fly to England, like if costs are similar, I would choose the the greenest flight. 
Oh. Uh, oh. Not that any fight's very gr- green, but <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. greenest flight. It's like the tallest. Is that the tallest midget or? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a word anymore. Remember? Oh, what is it? Is it? I don't know. Tallest Small person. Dwarf. Oh no, it is. It is dwarf or midget. They have different criteria. I saw. Um, I don't know. Some, there was a. Oh, what's his name? Michael Che, the black comedian. Yeah, he said he was calling like this transvestite a tranny, and she was like, "You can't, don't call me a tranny. It's offensive." He's like, "What do you mean? How can tranny be? A- I just added a Y, like trans tranny. What's what's the difference?" And the transvestite was like, "How would you like it if I called you Blackie?" And he was like, "Ah, oh, yeah, you got me." <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. Hey, Blackie. Oh. <laughs> Actually, wow, that Y carries some power. It does. All right, everyone, thanks for watching this week's episode of the B-Side Word. Make sure if you enjoyed it to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe and drop us your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit the bell, hit the bell. Hit the bell, hit the bell. bell.